This is Ground Affected. My name is Brent. And welcome to Clickbait. That actually isn't clickbait. And in this video, I'm gonna show you five cheapish things that I cannot live without as a 3D printer, model painter person thing. Oh yeah, I must mention, before we carry on with the video, make sure to click like, click subscribe, and of course, leave a little comment in that space below the video where they allow you to leave some words, just type words. That's all you need to do. The first thing I'm gonna show you is my wet palette, because of course, the wet palette is one of the most imperative tools to actually painting any of these models. And the only reason I say this is because this thing has saved me countless liters of paint. And by liters, I mean milliliters because we don't work in liters. The wet palette that I have is from Army Painter. The only reason I chose this one is because that's the only one I knew of when I first started painting. And let's be honest, a wet palette is essentially just a container that holds a sponge and you place a piece of parchment paper in it. This particular one has space for me to put my paint brushes as well as I keep a couple of tools in there as a couple of the protector nozzles for my airbrush because I'm gangster and I don't use a protector nozzle when I spray with my airbrush. The little cleaning pokey stick sharp tool for cleaning out nozzles on the airbrush as well as the tool that you need for taking off the entire tip of the airbrush. Although I actually just finger tighten that now because it, I'm always gonna need to access it. So I just keep it finger tight so that I can open it with my hands. A wet palette is extremely cheap. They're usually around 15 to 20 pounds, give or take depending on which manufacturer you buy. But for this kind of price, the uses by far outweigh the money. The next thing I choose on a list of things I cannot live without is this Nocturna set of skin paints. Fairy flesh set from Nocturna by Vallejo, I think. I'm not sure the whole story of Nocturna and Vallejo, but this set, is something that I absolutely adore. And there is something that you do need to pair with this set to make it the best skin set you can actually use. And that is Grimoire Purple from Army Painter. This you can buy separately, of course. The two of these together shouldn't cost you more than about 25 pounds, but it's definitely something that I need in my list of five cheapest things that you need if you want to 3D print and paint models like a cool person now this thing i don't think is absolutely necessary but for the use it's given me for the kind of price that it costs i think it's definitely worth putting into a video like this this was actually given to me as a christmas present believe it or not but my wife bought me this thinking it was a rotating display stand that was automatic i can put a battery in it stick my model on it will rotate and take a couple of cool pictures when i got that at first i was kind of a bit disappointed because that's what i was expecting However, this thing has become a tool that I use on every single paint job. Only because it's super easy to place your model on top, especially when you're airbrushing things. It's got little holes in it for you to stick toothpicks and maybe you can mount your parts onto those toothpicks and you can then rotate it. And this obviously helps you able to paint all the way around an item without having to touch it and move it around. This has definitely proven to be extremely useful for me. And I think they're only about five, maybe six pounds. Something else that I think is a little bit overlooked when you're buying supplies for painting models is blue tack, or in my case, pink tack, because of all the paint that's gone all over it. You need something like this, poster, tack, whatever you want to call it, I don't really care, as long as you get some of this, because this is going to be useful for many things. It's useful to stick model parts together so that you can paint them. It's also useful so that you can stick a model onto a base so that you can hold it for easier painting as well. The other thing it's useful for is masking off areas as well. It's a little bit harsh, it can pull up paint, but you can use it to mask mask areas with pretty much close enough accurate precision and ease of use because you can just mold it into the shape that you need to mask stick it over the area airbrush boom magic cheap less than five quid i have previously done a video on dusting models this is for dusting them before you paint them because of course if you have dust particles on your model before you put paint on it that is going to show up in your paint in order to stay on top of it i have a couple of tools that help me make sure that my prints are extremely clean and these things don't cost an arm and a leg to be able to do this the first thing i'm going to talk about is these makeup brushes i definitely didn't steal these from my wife 
but they don't cost a lot and you can buy a load of them on Amazon or eBay for extremely cheap and you get a whole bag of them. Just try to get really large ones. They're also really good for dry brushing too, but do not use your dry brush makeup brush for dusting a model, especially once it's been painted because you're gonna have a bad time. The other thing that is extremely detrimental to cleaning 3D prints, at least for me, is my child's toothbrush and alcohol in a spray bottle. Now this doesn't have to be your own child's toothbrush. It could be anybody's child's toothbrush. But as long as you have a child's toothbrush, this is gonna be extremely helpful for cleaning your parts. The reason why I say child's toothbrush is because the bristles are a little bit softer than an adult's toothbrush, unless you buy a toothbrush for soft teeth adults. Which in that case, that will work too. But a child's toothbrush, super easy, super cheap at the supermarket, and a spray bottle from the garden center. I put isopropyl alcohol in the spray bottle. This is because dealing with resin, specifically standard resin, ISO is what cleans them. So when they come out of the ISO when they're being cleaned, I then spray more ISO on them to clean them a little bit more, just to make sure they're super clean. In one of my first few videos that I uploaded, I had this exact wet palette to give away, sponsored to us by Army Painter themselves. Unfortunately, the winner never ever replied to the comment or ever got back to me, so I was not able to give it to them, and I'm just gonna give it to someone else now. So if you would like to have a chance to win a wet palette, then leave a comment in the below, because I'm gonna be choosing any one of the people who comment on this video to win this wet palette. If you are in UK, I will ship it to you for free. If you are outside of UK, I'm gonna ask you to pay for shipping, unfortunately, because these things start to get expensive. But technically, it'll still be cheaper than buying one. Maybe. I don't know. It depends how far you live. Now, this one is not cheap. So, I kind of clickbaited you on that, but technically, everything else in the video is extremely cheap. This is around £60 for me. But this bottle is able to be stretched over at least five to six other bottles of resin. This is Soraya Tech Tenacious, and this on its own is a flexible resin. So you can print things that are flexible. The only thing I've found is that it's flexible to a point because then it snaps. But we can use this to our advantage and mix this into our standard resins. And this for someone who is doing commission painting is extremely important, I think. This is the main reason why my models make it to most of their destinations in one complete whole piece. Because standard resin is extremely brittle, so we give it a slight amount of flex to make it withstand a little bit more damage if it does happen to get bounced around or the postman decides to have a rugby match with your parcel. So this is expensive, but it's definitely worth it because it can be spread over the next few bottles, so technically it's only about 15 pound a bottle that you mix it into not for the actual bottle because that's not 15 pounds but you get me and as a bonus tip i'm just going to talk about this lovely brown paper that i have on my table you see it in every video and every time it looks like my table has just been destroyed i have not destroyed my table all i do is replace this brown paper it costs me a pound for a roll and i can replace my table about 10 times do yourself a favor, buy yourself some of this brown paper or any color paper really and just stick it over your work surface. This will definitely help protect your surface and make it a lot easier for you to have clean models with clean paint over the top. And now we're already near the end of the video and well done, you made it this far. Thank you so much for supporting me and for watching my videos, even if they did sometimes make absolutely no sense. Trust me, it makes no sense to me trying to edit them sometimes. I do need to mention though, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Of course, if you want to join the Patreon, this helps support the channel even more, then the link for that is in the description below. I will also try to leave links for all the products and items that I had in this video in the description as well. And speaking of patrons, there's a couple more patrons that I do need to thank for joining in the last week. Belly, Dobson and Miguel, Almeida, thank you my dudes so much. Your support means the world to me. And it's because of you guys that I'm able to keep these lights blinding the corneas of my eyes. And of course, we all know if you've managed to make it this far in the video, I don't even know what you're doing. But if you don't like anything you saw or heard in the video, then just click dislike, bruh. And and let's hope that this time, the winner of the palette actually contacts me back because clearly that didn't work last time.